All right, what's up, DVW fam? So we're back in Koreatown for part two on our best Korean barbecue in Los Angeles series. You know, Koreatown has some of the best Korean barbecue in the world. So we're right outside of Ten Raku, and they are known for their specialty Kobe premium meats and Korean barbecue. So let's go inside and check it out. Let's go. All right, y'all, so we are in Koreatown. So we have Mr. Steve here, <laughs> Korean barbecue and Koreatown expert in LA mm -hmm. back with us to join us on this video. So how you doing, Steve? Doing good, yep. good, yeah, always doing good. Happy to be here. Yep, are you ready to eat? I, I Absolutely, yeah, uh -huh. definitely. And we're just going through the menu right now. Steve has actually been here before and he also has a video on this spot, but yeah, how about you tell us what we should order, Steve? Yeah, definitely. So when you come here, this restaurant is known for premium, high quality, meats they have kobe style beef here which you should definitely get here so today since we are big eaters we're gonna get the big combo wow. set does that sound good yeah that sounds amazing yeah so this combo set has a little bit of everything from like the filet mignons to the kobe style beef you know all the traditional korean barbecue selections as well so it's definitely for the heavy eaters and for big groups as well and then something else that they're really known for here is the octopus kind of like an octopus stew stew mm -hmm. They call this the Nakchi Chorpan, which is the only restaurant in Koreatown that serves a specialty that you could find in Korea. Wow. So this is definitely something you gotta check out here too. Yeah guys, we're in for a treat on this top Korean barbecue in Koreatown tour. So can't wait to get started. Let's get it. Yeah, let's do it. So they just brought out the banchan. Looks a lot of banchan was very unique. But this is one of their top items right here, which is the raw crab. Um, Eric was telling us, the owner, that a lot of Koreans love to eat this, so this comes with their premium meats right here. I have never tried this yet, the spicy raw crab, so me and Rockstar Eater here is gonna take a stab at it. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, smell it. Yeah, this is something, uh, if you find it as banchan in a Korean restaurant, you know it's you're at a pretty luxurious place. Oh wow. No, not every place serves this. It's just, right. it's raw crab, basically. Let's try it out. Yes. Mmm. Wow. You see how sweet that is? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm. And it is a little spicy too. It has a nice fresh flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the gochujang sauce on the outside gives it that extra kick. But yeah, like Steve said, the crab is really cold and fresh. It's good. Yeah, you need to have it fresh or else you can't serve it. Woo! <laughs> mmm. Mmm. Mm. Kind of reminds me of sashimi or like a sweet shrimp in a way. Mm. It's good. Pretty good starter. And also, we gotta judge uh, Korean barbecue spot better than kimchi. Mm -hmm. They seem to have all the main sides that I appreciate at a Korean barbecue restaurant here. Oh. Fish cake, macaroni, kimchi. <laughs> Extra spicy now. Extra spicy. All right. Mm. That's good kimchi. Nice, crunchy, fresh, just like how I like it. Yeah, well seasoned, man. So I guess we're ready for the meat, sir. Absolutely. Let's do it. So the combo C meat platter is here, one of your top items. Wow, this looks amazing. Okay, the first roll is a uh, you know Kobe style short rib, mm -hmm. and second roll is a prime short rib, and this one is also you know prime short rib, and square steak, and filet mignon, and ribeye, and Ooh. this is a marinated short rib. Awesome. But this isn't all of it. They still got pork belly and brisket coming through. All right. And then, you know, we just uh, go by this order because uh, we just do start first with the uh, better quality meat first. Oh, okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. You know, sometimes they say save the best for last. They're doing the opposite here. They're bringing us the best first. The Kobe beef, the first one, best one, Kobe beef. Yeah, they're starting off pretty hot. You know it's good when Steve is over there licking his chops. <laughs> See that? <laughs> yeah. Look at how marble the meat is, guys. It looks nice and fatty for us. And also, they cook it for us, so you know it's gonna be cooked for perfection rather than cooking it for yourself. So yeah, it's quite an experience. Lunch or dinner with the show, so it's a great place to bring a date. Absolutely. <laughs> this is medium rare for us, mm -hmm. and we're recommended to use it with the salt, so. Yes. All right. Yeah. There it goes. Just a tab, I would say. A dab. Wow. Ready? Ready? Yes. Cheers. Here we go. Mmm. Isn't wow. that thing just... That's nice and juicy. Nice and marbled fatty. 
but has a slight chew to it as well. Mm, that was really good. It's buttery, right? Yeah, very buttery. That's a great word. Almost like melts in your mouth. It's it's almost like uh, like beef toro in some ways. Oh yeah, and that's funny because I just had toro. <laughs> and the uh, consistency when it was raw kind of looked like toro too. It did. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. yeah. Got to have another one. Another one. Shall we do All it with right. maybe the barbecue sauce this time? Let's try the barbecue sauce on this one. Oh yeah. Mmm. -hmm. So now it's sweet. This is so tender. Mm -hmm. Wow. I can see why they served this first. The best first. Woo! It's amazing. Oh. <laughs> After the Kobe, this is their second, which is the prime short rib right here. Pretty much carby, yep. So carby is definitely something you should get at a Korean barbecue restaurant. If you don't know anything else to get, I would say carby is always the way to go, especially if you go to a premium Korean barbecue restaurant. Carby, I would say, is the best thing to get. So, Dan, you're in for a treat. All right. So, this is their second. And like I said, they're doing it from best to least best. But, yeah. <laughs> so, this is the prime short rib. All yep. right. Let's try it out. All so, right. we're also recommending to use salt for this one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. You could taste the premium flavor to all these meats guys not your regular Korean barbecue this is very tender just like the Kobe but just has a slight chew to it what do you think Steve? I would say it kind of has a little bit more of a beefier taste to Ooh, it yeah yeah mm -hmm. but a very recognizable flavor you know what uh, carby tastes like mm -hmm. but I, I'm so surprised because it kind of has that same marble butteriness to yeah. it yeah that richness oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really awesome yeah Ooh. so this is the skirt steak Mmm, yes. All if right. you guys like uh, carne asada, this is your meat right oh, here. Oh, yeah, skirt steak. I want some salt on mine. Salt on that? Oh, absolutely. All right, I'm gonna do the salt as well. Okay, All let's right. do it. Mmm. Mmm. This one definitely has a more meatier taste. You can taste more of that grill on it. Mm hmm. But it's also still very tender, but. Extremely ooh. tender. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's, you're getting a tour of all the different kinds of meats. And they use a charcoal grill here, so you can really taste like that grill flavor. So it's really cooked to perfection, guys. Absolutely. And like Steve was saying, this is not like your all-you-can-eat barbecue meat. All the meat just tastes very premium. So meat number four, guys, they just slapped a slab of ribeye on the grill for us. And just watching it sizzle and grill is an experience on its own, guys. Absolutely. You know, ribeye steak is not your very traditional Korean barbecue choice, because like I said, for you know, chato brisket as well as carby is more of the traditional choices. But ribeye is catching on in Korean barbecue steakhouses, so if it's really good quality, it's gonna be pretty fantastic to eat. Yep. Yeah. Salt again. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. That's tender, right? If you saw them cooking on the grill, the fire was just engulfing the meat. You really do get that grill flavor. I taste the grill flavor the most on this ribeye steak. It tastes like a very quality piece of meat. Yeah, and another thing that's really cool, I mean, it's more of a trend these days is that they're gonna cook your meats here mm -hmm. at your table because obviously they wanna cook it for to perfection for yeah. you. And uh, there's certain ways to cook certain meats. Like I would recommend for steaks, definitely medium, medium rare, because mm -hmm. that's where it tastes the best. Oh yeah. With um, more of the traditional cuts, like the carby and the brisket. I mean, if you go well done, that's pretty much how it is. And I, I personally think it tastes better when it's really like grilled all the way yeah, through. Yeah, crispy, I call crispy. it crispy. Yeah, but steak, I would not recommend you cook it all the way through. Definitely mm -hmm. get it medium. Yep. Yeah. Comment down below how you guys like your steak. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it is like a mini Benihana experience here, guys. Now, I'm gonna try this one with the sweet barbecue sauce. It's bomb. Mm. Uh, barbecue sauce is, has a, like, a little thick consistency to, mm -hmm. to it as well. Yeah. It's really good. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. So this is the filet right here, our fifth meat. Look at that. While we wait for our next meat, me and Steve, we're gonna try some of this fish cake right here. Oh yeah, definitely eat this because it's very tasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, generous serving. Mmm, 
very spongy, has a nice sweetness to it. Also yeah. kind of fresh. Exactly, it's mm -hmm. um, it's very um, savory, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that goes good with anything, with barbecue, over some white rice. You know, it's it's good for any occasion, mm -hmm. <laughs> any Korean restaurants. Love fish cake. All right, let's try some macaroni. Macaroni, macaroni salad, right? Yes, and this you'll find in a lot of Korean barbecue restaurants, both all you can eat and premium. Mm -hmm. See, either this or the potato salad. Mmm. a lot of crunch in there. A lot of textures. Yeah, that one, I like it because it's very refreshing. Yeah, that's the word. And it's sweet too, mm -hmm. like kind of fruity sweet. Yeah, it gives it the contrast to all the meats you're eating. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is the filet right here, number five. Yeah, it's very pillowy soft. Yep, very thick, like cubes. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, definitely some salt on this salt one. again? Yes. Mmm. Mm. Your teeth just carves through that. That was definitely very pillowy soft, like Steve said. I don't think you even need teeth to bite into that. Ooh, that one's very, very soft, tender. I know. I feel like I could sit here and maybe eat like 50 of those pieces. Yeah, it's like almost like candy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like beef candy. These like Ooh. little bite sized pieces. So yeah. Good. Oh, man. Yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite cuts here at this restaurant. Oh, yeah, the filet. Yeah. Ooh, gonna have another one. Me too. Barbecue sauce this time. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Definitely the softest. I'm so happy, man. Signature Steve dance. Mm hmm <laughs> That they rank the meats from best to least best, but man, I can't even tell because all the meats we've been having so far have just been top notch. Just top incredible. Tier. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think they're all different in yeah. its own way, but they're all so good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, definitely premium stuff, dude. For real. All right, so the next meat is the marinated Garby. short rib. Yes. Wow, look, so crispy. Nice crisp on the edges. Yes, and yeah, and this is already marinated, so it has its own sauce. Yes. I'm gonna have my first piece, just tasting the raw marination, and then I'll use the sauce. Yes. All right, cheers. Mm. Mm. Wow. It's just that nice caramelization from like the fire of the grill and the sweetness of the sauce just goes together very well. Wow, what do you think, Steve? This is perfect because it's tender, it's uh, well marinated in the sense that it's sweet, and it has that crispiness to it as well. Yeah. That is the magical combination of carby right there. Yeah, and like this is just captures the essence of Korean barbecue so well. Sweet flavor, premium meat, flame grill, yeah, like I've been saying, if you don't know what else to get, marinated carby is definitely, you can't go wrong with it, and it's a very traditional choice. So here, it doesn't disappoint. Yeah. Uh, the restaurant likes to pride themselves on the variety of all the meats. If you want to substitute the meat for something on the platter, you could do beef intestines, right? Yeah. Or uh, beef the intestines, or like the state, the tar beef tartare. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beef tongue too. Beef tongue. Yeah and a pork belly as well. Yep. Yeah, but what I find interesting about this restaurant is that their combo, I've never seen so much variety of meats yeah, on there. Yeah, variety. Exactly, it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, and, but we chose the most premium meats here, so that's what you're seeing. The best of the best. Exactly, I mean, if we are here at this restaurant, we, we might as well choose the most premium, right? Yep. I'm very impressed, and yeah, so we finished all the premium meats. We, uh, we tried out a little bit of all the premium meats, so they're changing the grill for us to cook the rest which is the brisket and the pork belly so mm -hmm. different grills for different flavors yeah. wow so i guess even the rice is premium so they don't use regular steam rice it's purple rice exactly mm, smells good ah oh, yeah you need rice to do a meal if you guys couldn't tell this isn't no regular brisket it's kobe brisket so look at the color and the marbling on that meat guys mm. you can so we're going to try the Kobe brisket, guys, right here. Oh, yeah. Look right. at it. Nice, thin pieces. In Korean, they call it chadol. Chadol. That's, That's right. right. Exactly. Oh, you know what? They have the chadol sauce. I forgot about oh, this. Oh, the brisket sauce. Brisket sauce, yeah. yeah dip in the brisket sauce right A here. lot of brisket sauce. It makes it, the meat very sweet. Let's try it out. Yes. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. Definitely you could taste the quality in that brisket. It's not your regular brisket. Oh. Just extra, you know, fatty and juicy. Oh, try yeah. it with some of the purple rice. 
Tastes good, huh? This rice is nice and glutinous. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. So there's actually a special way that you should eat this brisket or the pork belly with your side. So Steve is gonna demonstrate that for us right here. He's gonna make us a little brisket sandwich. What would you call it? Wrap. Maybe like a wrap, wrap. or a taco basically. Yeah, <laughs> like a brisket taco. The first thing you wanna do is to get a piece of this and uh, yes, you're probably gonna get your hands a little dirty. Then take a piece of, uh, let's see, the brisket right here. Put it in just like that. You can put some of this samjang in here as well. I mean, some people like to put the rice, it's up to you, but why not? I'll just put a little bit of it. And uh, yeah, so you have your little wrap, just like that. Yep, another way to make it, once again, beef brisket right there. You can put some of the samjang sauce and also if you want some chili right in there as well. And then maybe a little garlic. Absolutely, I'm gonna make yours very spicy, man. Oh, okay. Look at that, masterpiece. Wow. Thank you, Steve. Steve just made me a little Korean taco right here. Exactly, shall right. we partake? Cheers. The spicy of You see how that flavor is so interesting because the outside is crunchy and kind of refreshing, but then inside yeah. you get that beef taste. Yeah. I'm mistaken, you know how we call it a taco at first? You know what, it has like a fresh flavor. It more tastes like a Korean spring roll. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, uh, that's right. Wow, but this Samyang sauce, guys, it gives it like that robust flavor. Yeah, and I, oh, I, I like it. I've actually met somebody who um, took the whole Samyang sauce and was just eating it like that. Oh yeah, it's so good. I was doing that at the, a previous Korean barbecue place. I was really? sauce and it's so good. Oh, that's a little too intense for me, mm -hmm. but some people like to do it. All right, so there's a recommendation for how we should eat this pork belly as well. All right, well, the first way you can do it is to take some of the kimchi and to eat it together. The grilled kimchi? Just All like right. that. And be careful because it's very hot. Okay. This, I always say, is one of the most enjoyable ways to eat the pork belly. Grilled kimchi, grilled pork belly. Uh -huh. That grilled kimchi almost gives like a sour taste. Pretty good. Yeah. And of course, it's, it's uh, kind of crunchy. Mm -hmm. A lot of textures. A lot of textures. I think that kimchi really does add so much flavor to that pork belly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to cook that pork belly till it's crispy. Very That's crispy. Exactly. Look at this. And guys, you can take it and put in the salt as well. Pork belly usually doesn't have as much flavor as beef, so I really like to load it up with the sauces. So Steve tried it with salt i'm gonna use this samyang sauce right here i i just really love this sauce right here guys oh wow this is amazing mm -hmm. mm. just such a nice thick paste it's like very robust in flavors a bit sweet so, so this is the third way to eat the pork belly we're gonna go pretty hardcore we're gonna put two pieces of the pork belly inside of it more meat is better right dan yep absolutely more the merrier and well you know what we can also do Hawaiian style, we put a piece of that grilled pineapple inside Ooh, of it. Yeah. Yeah, and would you like some of the samjang in it too? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna have a sweet and salty flavor to the whole thing, and maybe just a little bit spicy as All well. Right. Wow, this is your combination right, right here. Wow, it looks delicious. Here Thank you, go. you. If you guys have had Leo's tacos or any auto butter or Al Pastor tacos, yes. sometimes they put a little slice of pineapple in there for you. So this is the Korean version, I guess. Mmm. Mmm. Now it's like sweet pork. I think that's the most unique way I've ever eaten a pork belly yeah. at a Korean barbecue restaurant. When you bite into the grilled pineapple, the juices just explode in your mouth. And exactly. Engulfs all the meat. Wow. That was really good. It made it like savory but sweet at the same time. Dan, I think I've just found my new idea for Korean street food right here. Oh yeah, this let's, is... let's wrap that pork belly in some of this radish slices with some of that uh, pineapple and some samjang. That's we dangerous. got a complete meal, right? Yeah, that one for real tasted like a Korean barbecue taco right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Oh wow. Yeah, and that's the thing I love about Korean barbecue restaurants and Korean food is just so many flavors and textures. You know, you got spiciness, sweetness, savory. It's everything. Yep. There's just oh, so yeah. much food. Just when you thought the party was done, there's just more meats, pineapples, grilled kimchi. 
Wow. Yeah, and they will always refill the punch on tube, so mm -hmm. if it's low, definitely ask for more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also with the combo, you could also choose one of these three soups and dishes, which is the soybean yep. soup. Yep, tenjang chige, and then you also got the spicy ramen noodles, which is always awesome for noodle fans. And then you also have kimchi fried rice, which Ooh. I always think is the way to go. Yeah, I love kimchi fried rice. Oh, man. All right, guys, so we we're almost done with our barbecue experience, but we just had to get this right here. This is their nakchi, which is their octopus stew. This is one of the only places in America and in Los Angeles where you could get this is one of their top dishes and it looks crazy. So we're in for a treat. All right guys, so after that show, the nakchi is all complete here, steaming for us. Like I said, one of the only places in America where you could get this. I've never had this before and it's octopus stew, right? Yes, yes. And before I came to this restaurant, I've never had it before too. But if you go to Korea, this is one of many amazing dishes that you can find in South Korea. But here, wow. you get a taste of home, basically, right. if you're Korean. Yeah, and I've had hot pot before, Taiwanese hot pot, Japanese, Vietnamese, and I guess this is a first time trying Korean hot pot. Yeah. So let's try it out. Definitely. You see some like glass noodles in here. Yep, onions. Bean sprouts. Bean sprouts. Yeah, real deal hot pot. It's very comforting, right? There's a lot of chew to the octopus. Very fresh and comforting, like Steve said. There's so much flavor. There's a little like, kick to it as well. Very crunchy. A lot of texture in the in the dish. A lot of vegetables. That octopus is so tender. Yeah, it's really one of the most tender octopus that you can have in a Korean restaurant. Ooh, yeah. This is like the perfect food to eat on a cold day. Yeah. It's kind of cold in LA right now, about like 65 degrees, so that'll do in California. Mm -hmm. But it has a very interesting flavor. It's almost like I can't get like a minty kick from it too. Yep, mm -hmm. preservement in there. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a variety of flavors going on in there. Yeah, so many herbs. But yeah, the octopus is very, very good, very crunchy, a lot of texture. I really like octopus. How about you? Yeah, the octopus, like I said, is one of the standouts in this dish because to make this dish good, you have to have good quality tender octopus, mm -hmm. which they do deliver here. I mean, have you ever had that octopus before where it's like so chewy in a bad way? Rubbery? Rubbery, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this one is perfect. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so when you come here, this is something you definitely need to order because they're known for it. Mm -hmm. Only restaurant in Koreatown that has it. So definitely come on a cold day and enjoy it with a group because it's a lot of food, that's why. Yeah. And this is good enough to feed like three or four people, guys. Easily, yep. Easily. So after you're finished with this, they're gonna make you some octopus fried rice. Ooh, are you ready for that? Oh, I'm ready. Oh yeah. You're actually supposed to eat the octopus with this octopus sauce right here. There's a little wasabi for us. That's interesting. Mm, let's try this out. Yeah. Get a little wasabi in this. All right. Mmm. Mm. Ooh, that's good. You know what that kind of reminds me of is, you know what the wasabi in there, it's like eating a piece of octopus sushi. Mm, yeah. yeah, and the sauce is very sweet, minty, with the, with the wasabi in there, it gives it that spicy kick. It really opens up your nasal. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so after you're done with the octopus stew, they use the residue to make the octopus kimchi fried rice. It's about to be a movie. Yeah, and they make it right in front of you. Can we, could you imagine if you had to make the kimchi fried rice yourself, like they give you all the ingredients, so you just have to figure it out? Don't worry about it. They're actually gonna help you with that. Kakugi, the radish kimchi. Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Ooh. I always love that nice and pickle taste from kimchi fried rice, but the thing about this one, I've noticed that it's not too oily. Yeah. It's very fresh. Exactly. Uh, kimchi fried rice, I think, is really a great way to end any uh, Korean barbecue mm -hmm. meal. Just because it tastes so, uh, it's comforting when you eat into it, and it is definitely very exciting. But you yeah. know what makes it even more exciting? What? Is when you take some of this oh, yeah. soup broth from the nakji, and you spread it generously over the rice and get a big scoop of that. So apparently that's what you're supposed to use. Use it soup base as a little sauce. Try it out. Mmm. 
really brings out the flavor. And the purple rice just makes it nice and glutinous. The rice mm -hmm. is like very chewy. It's a good kimchi fried rice. I think that that soup really completes the flavor of mm -hmm. this kimchi fried rice. It adds so much more of that amazing soupy flavor to it. So yeah, definitely enjoy your kimchi fried rice with that nakchi broth. Yeah, and this is not the only kimchi fried rice they can make for you if you're ordering, you know, gopchang, uh, beef intestines, or you know, other types of meats. Oh, yeah. They'll finish off the meal for you with a uh, kimchi fried rice. Yeah, so much like little vegetables, texture, crunch in this kimchi fried rice, and the octopus. You bite into that, it's like a little surprise in the kimchi fried rice. And the seaweed is pretty good mm -hmm. too. This is their fresh, cold cucumber soup right here. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, nice sour vinaigrette. Very refreshing. Oh yeah. yeah. For the nakji cholpan, because it's spicy, what it's supposed to do is kind of neutralize the spiciness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you're really, getting hot, spicy, and refreshing. Yeah. It really cleanses your palate. Yeah. So that was a perfect way to end our Korean barbecue feast here at Ten Raku, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. So me and Steve are stuffed. That platter was crazy. The premium meats at Ten Raku. And I'm be honest, guys, I've been to a lot of Korean barbecue. And Steve here has been to a lot of Korean barbecue restaurants, mm -hmm. especially in LA. And this definitely shines in my series of the best Korean barbecue in Los Angeles. And LA has some of the best Korean barbecue in the world, even in Korea, right? Exactly, yeah. And uh, a lot of uh, even Koreans from Korea, they come here and they say this place is fantastic i mean you would think oh why would koreatown need another korean barbecue restaurant well don't skip this place it's really a hidden gem yeah that definitely deserves more attention yeah i was very surprised i've been to a lot of premium korean barbecues before but the kobe meat here all the premium meat is just like next level it was so buttery marbling all the meats was crazy so this is definitely top tier Korean barbecue. I would call this kind of like a Korean steakhouse because you're really getting like that prime quality meat and with a bunch of great Korean banchan and sides and all that other good stuff. Yeah, definitely. And they cook the meats for you, so it's gonna come out fantastic. Yep. All right guys, so that's it for this feature, this video. Make sure you guys check out Rockstar Eater's channel. I'll put a card up here and a link down below. Make sure you guys check out Ten Raku when you guys are in town. Definitely shot up my list of the best Korean barbecues. And yeah guys, if you like this video, please like it. Comment down below some recommendations for us. And subscribe for more DBW and Rockstar Eater food vlogs. Deuces. See ya.